say the game is getting old. Monday morning and your coffee's cold. Life is not what you want. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new direction. My name is Jay Izzo, and I am extraordinarily excited to be with you. We have a very unique show today. This is going to be something that I, I, I try not ever to do, but we're going to do it anyway. So I had a guest scheduled today and there was a scheduling conflict and it didn't work out. I, I was totally excited about doing this guest room, so we're going to have to do them at a later time. And because this happened in such a short period of time, I had to come up with something to do on today's show and I thought oh man what am I gonna do who can I call in 15 minutes and I I couldn't really call anybody in 15 minutes and ask them to do you know at the, the 45 minute to an hour show and so I thought okay I don't normally do this but what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to interview myself so, and you go what okay so most of the public doesn't know this, but I have written two more books entitled The Social Media Playbook for Student-Athletes and The Social Media Playbook for Coaches and Administrators. And so I'm going to talk about those books today because I know that many of you are parents and or grandparents or you may even be a student-athlete who listens to the show on the podcast. And I thought, well, you know, I am going to go ahead and talk about these two books and how they can help uh, maybe your young student athlete or somebody that, you know, maybe you have a young lady or young man who's a student athlete, whether they be in college, high school or whatever. And, you know, you want to give them some guidance in terms of how to handle social media. And so we're going to talk about those two books today because I'm, I'm very proud of them. First of all, these two books I'm very proud of. And so we're, we're, I'm going to interview me <laughs> and we're going to talk about social media and student athletes and social media and coaches. And we're going to bring that all together today. But before we do that, we're going to do what we do every single week. And that is, I want to check in with you on the four areas of your life, right? I believe that we're four part people, right? We're physical people. We are mental people. We're emotional people and spiritual people. And I want to check in with you to see where you're at and then where are you going to go and how are you going to get there? All right. So Let's talk about the physical. How are you doing today? On a scale of one to 10, one being you couldn't be any more miserable, 10, you can't be any better. Where are you at physically, right? Is it a three, four, five, six, seven? What, what, what is it for you, all right? Now, understand that the goal in any one of these areas is not to get from, if you're a three, to get to a 10. The goal should be, if I'm a four, how do I get to a 4.5, all right? So, Let's talk about those things in the physical areas of your life that you need to deal with, right? Like, you know, maybe you need to lose some weight, right? I, I know that for many people that that's an issue that they know they need to lose weight because, you know, you know, putting on weight puts pressure on your joints and, you know, some of us deal with pre-diabetes and things like that. And so we need to lose the weight because it, it helps. Sometimes it's just eating the right things, right? You know, staying away from things that you shouldn't have, you know, sugar, you know, white carbs, you know, like pasta and breads and things like that. You know, perhaps it is stopping drinking sodas. Maybe it's cutting back on drinking alcohol. It could be a number of things. And then it could be exercise, right? You know, by the way, one thing that I know, and I'm an avid, I'm an avid gym rat. One thing I know is that exercise alone is never going to really help you lose weight. You always have to couple that with your diet. All, all the time. If you don't make changes in your diet and you just work out, you will never be as fit and as healthy as you could be. So in that physical scale, right, it is a combination of doing the right things and it's a combination of exercise, but it's a combination of eating right, right? So what do you need to change right now? If you're four, what do you need to change right now to get yourself to 4.5 where you're feeling better, okay? Now, if, you, if you've got something that you you got a plan that says I can get for myself from a four to five if I just do this, right, being average, then what's keeping you from doing that? What's keeping you from being a five if you're a four or if you're a three to a four, right? And you know what I'll tell you, and I had this conversation with a friend of mine and we were having dinner and and. 
he was talking to me about losing weight. And I said to him, I said, you know what? Nothing ever changes until you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, right? But it's really true. Nothing changes until you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Because people will always threaten that, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to work out or I'm going to go and I'm going to eat better. And they threaten it, but they never really fall through. And so nothing ever changes. And it's because you're just not sick and tired enough. But when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, then you'll do something about it. I find that to be true. Some people, you know, they have to dangle a carrot in front of themselves in order to make those change. And I think that can work for some people, but I think for most of us, it really comes down to something dramatic happens in your life. And then all of a sudden you make that change. I, know, I want you to avoid that. And I want you to go ahead and start making that change physically. So what do you need to do to get yourself just from wherever that is on a scale of one to 10, wherever that is, what does it do to get you to the next number? Not to the 10, but to the very next number. All right, let's talk about mentally. And what do I mean mentally? Well, our mind is a terrible thing to waste. I know, right? But our mind, mentally, mentally, we are made up of two uh, parts, right? Where the, the, the right side of our brain is the creative side. The left side of our brain is the logical side. And we need to constantly be exercising our brain, just like we need to exercise our body. So, you know, what we fill it with is, you know, what we fill it with is so important. And then what we do to exercise it is so important. So on a scale of one to 10, mentally, meaning, you know, what are you putting into it? What are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you doing creatively? Like maybe you're taking and learning a new instrument. Maybe you're learning a new language. Maybe you're uh, learning to knit or maybe you're learning to cook or you're expanding your knowledge of, you know, how to do math or maybe do statistics or whatever it is. What are you doing to expand your mind on both sides of your brain? On a scale of one to 10, one being miserable, 10 being awesome, where are you in that scale mentally? All right, you got it? And then what can you do right now to change whatever that number is to change to the next number? Good. All right, let's go to emotionally. What I mean on a scale of one to 10, where are you at emotionally? One being miserable, 10 being great. Where are you at emotionally? Emotionally, I mean, how well are you able to be in control of your emotions? I mean, right now we're in the middle of a crazy holiday season. And I, I am seeing it more and more where people are so impatient because they're rushing from here to there. And, you know, you would think at a time of year when we're supposed to be goodwill towards men, it's actually, I have seen probably more hand gestures and more um, impatience of people cutting people off or hurrying to get someplace fast. And emotionally, I get the point that the people are losing emotional control. They, they are having a hard time emotionally with this. And I understand that for many people, and, so, and maybe for some of you who are watching and listening, you know, the holiday season is hard for some of you. And so it makes your emotions um, do some crazy things. What I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to be in control of your emotions. And that requires intention, by the way. You do not have to feel what you think you feel. Whatever you're feeling right now, you actually have a choice to change it. I'm not saying it's easy, but you do have a choice to change it. So what are you going to do to be better control of your emotions? And not only just when we talk about emotions, it's not just being in control of your emotions. It's also how well are you able to relate to the emotions of others? Do you, re do you really care? I mean, some of you are in business and, and, and some of you are in sales. And so what happens is sometimes you forget to really emotionally relate with your customer or emotionally relate with your future customer. You know, marketing is all about emotional relating. You know, the better able that you're able to relate to others emotionally, the better able you are to do your job, whatever that job is, whether that's relating with the people that you work with, relating with your boss, relating with the manager, relating with the other customers, whatever that may be, your emotional intelligence, your emotional quotient is so important in order to enhance the lives of others. All right. So you got the emotional part. All right. Finally, spiritually on a scale of one to 10, one being miserable, 10 being great. Where are you at spiritually? And I get this all the time about, I don't believe in spiritual things. 
you do. We all do. You, you, everybody believes in something spiritual. You just don't think of it in that way. And, you know, the first thing that everybody jumps to is, you know, they, you know, uh, you know, God is the first thing that people will jump to. And I'm, that's great. I mean, if that's what you do, good for you. And, and if you're doing that, I, but I, and I know other people though will, you know, relate to nature in some way, or, you know, they relate to karma or whatever it may be, right. They relate to something outside of themselves, but it's spiritual in the sense that there are things that we can't explain with science. There are things that we can't explain in this world in any other way, but to say that it's a spiritual thing. And if somebody said, well, give me an example. Okay, well, I'll give you a really great example. It is hard, for example, to explain love for another human being scientifically. It really, it really is. It really is hard to explain, and it's not a feeling. Okay? That's emotional. There's something inside you that is just that, that you can't explain, you don't understand it, that draws you to certain people. And it's not pheromones. It's not, there's nothing scientific. It's just something inside you that's, that you know that you're just drawn to that person. It's spiritual. Okay. So the other piece of it is that there, you know, you could be in the midst of incredible circumstances and have be centered and have a sense of peace and joy. And that's spiritual as well. And so wherever you're at, in that whole realm of what you believe spiritually, right? And if it is God, you know, how is that relationship going, right? I, I'm, I'm, I, it's important to you and I get it. But how, how is that working out for you, right? Because I find that people who are the most spiritual and the most centered, they're well-grounded. They also um, seem to have a calmness and a peace about them. And that's not emotional. It's just that in the midst of all circumstances, they're able to keep it together. So where are you in the physical, the mental, emotional? You got those numbers? And think in, think in terms of this. Those numbers are like the four legs of a table that you eat off of. And so if you're all fives, okay, your table's level, but it's only halfway up to where it should be, okay? If you're all nines, well, that means your table's level, but it's, 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 and it's almost at the right height. But let's say you're a three, nine, you know, four, six. Well, now your table's all twisted. You try keeping a plate, try eating off a table that's twisted like that. It's very difficult to do. So what we want to do is we want to get balance. And we also want to be able to also raise ourselves in all four of those spiritual areas. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So it's about just getting better, right? Because that's what we do here on the New Directions. We get better. So today, let me, let me tell you what today is going to be. So today, I'm going to talk about, I, again, for folks who are joining me, and I thank um, Nato and Muriel for joining me today. So let me, and, and everybody else who's out there listening. So I had a guest scheduled today, and there was a scheduling conflict. conflict. And that occasionally, this first time this has happened, by the way, but it occasionally does happen where that type of thing happens at the very last minute, and you just don't know. So I'm doing something that I don't normally do and something I don't ever want to do uh, again. And that is I'm going to, I have two new books on the market and one is the social media playbook for student athletes. And the other is the social media playbook for coaches and administrators that is available on Amazon, both the paperback and a Kindle version. And um, <clears throat> also, by the way, you could, you know, you can order it at your bookstore as well. So if you want to get it at your local bookstore, you can absolutely order that. And they're not expensive. They're all they're under ten dollars, so like nine ninety nine or something like that. So, the and the Kindle version is even less, I believe. So, th these books are available. And the reason I wrote these books, this the social media playbook for student athletes and the social media playbook for coaches and administrators, is because I really felt that there's just such a need to help uh, young people and coaches and administrators understand this world of social media. There is such a tendency to blame social media for everything. And, you know, social media, as I've written about, is neither good or bad. It's not, it's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's just a thing. And it's like anything else in our life. It's a tool that can be used. And it could be a great tool, right? And 
pick a tool in the toolbox. I don't care what it is. A hammer? Let's take a hammer. You know, a hammer is not good or bad by itself. Now, if you hammer a nail and it holds things together, it's a good thing. If I hit you on the head with it, it's a bad thing. And that's what social media is. And so what I wanted student athletes and coaches and administrators to understand was that, first of all, that social media was not the problem. The problem has always been when it comes to social media that it's the people who use it, not the platform itself. And we're going to talk more about that today. So that, that's what we're going to talk about in the show. But before I do that, I need to absolutely um, let you know that today's show is sponsored by Enline Business Brokers and Advisors. And uh, it's enline.com, www.enlign.com. If you are a business owner or you know maybe you want to buy a business, but if you're a business owner, at some point, you're going to need the services of an experienced business broker, right? So selling your business, your business is a huge decision. And so why not make sure that you have the ideal deal team? And that starts with inline business brokers and advisors. I am telling you, Jeff Snell and his people are incredible. They, are, they offer amazing service. They get the job done. They're going to get you the best possible deal out there for your business. And they'll help you find the right business at the same time too, if you're looking for that. If you wanna learn more, and I think you should, just go to www.enline.com. That's www.enlign.com. And when you go there, will you tell them that you heard them on A New Direction with Jay Izzo and tell them that, that would be awesome. So we're talking about student athletes and and we're talking about coaches and administrators and social media and how that interacts because I have two new books out called The Social Media Playbook for Student Athletes and The Social Media Playbook for Coaches and Administrators. And this is a little bit of departure from what I plan to do today because I had a guest who had a scheduling conflict. But I know that everybody who's listening to my show knows somebody, you're either a parent, grandparent, or you are a student athlete, or you're a friend of friend, somebody who's a student athlete. And the dangers, but also the good side, of social media when it comes to student athletes. One of the things when it comes to student athletes is that, you know, they are put in a very awkward position. These are 18 to 20 somethings typically, early 20 somethings, that make up the smallest, per one of the smallest percentage of an entire university or college, and yet they are focused more than any other people in the college. Nobody talks about an English major and their Facebook page. Okay. Nobody ever does, but have a football player say something on Twitter and it makes national headlines, right? Nobody cares what the math major does on Instagram, but have a female soccer player say something, say the wrong thing on Instagram. It becomes major headlines. And when we think about it that way, it can seem like it's an unfair world, and, and it probably is. In reality, it's not fair, but the world's not fair. The fact of the matter is, when we put ourselves into that realm of being a student athlete, the truth is, you become a target, and especially for news media. News media wants to target, and by the way, they rarely target the student athlete. Have you ever noticed this? They rarely target the student athlete for something good that they did. It's very rare that you'll find that when a student athlete, you know, tweets out that they just gave blood at for the Red Cross, and I think people should do that, that it doesn't make national news. But say that an athlete um, uh, puts a mustache <laughs> on a Red Cross van and tweets it, the picture of it, now it's national headlines, Right. Because we are so drawn, always drawn to the negative than we are to the positive. And we've set that up in our society for whatever reason. We are always more drawn to wanting to see the negative of somebody and so many people. And by the way, this is true if you're in business too, right? I mean, you know this people, if you're, you're in upper level management or you're in sales or something like that, you do one thing wrong and it becomes public, they're, they're going to make it public. They're going to bash you. They're going to throw stones at you. They're going to tell you what kind of a horrible person you are. 
because you you're the business person, you're the manager, you're the boss, you're the you're the CEO, you, you're the person who's in the limelight. So they're going to talk everything negative. You could do 150 things right. You do one, make one mistake, and it becomes national headlines. And this is true of the student athlete. And it's not, it's not right, right? And social media, and like I said, social media is not good or bad. But the fact of the matter is, it's a public forum. So whether that be Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, it's public. And I'm not going to talk much about Snapchat. And the reason why I'm not going to talk much about Snapchat, because let's be honest, folks, it's on its way out. The the if we're being honest, unless they do something dramatically to change it, it's basically becoming a penny stock because it, it they're just, they've lost so many billions of dollars at this point that I'm I'm not going to reference it at all because um, there's no reason to. <clears throat> and besides that, Instagram does Snapchat better than Snapchat does Snapchat. But one of the issues that happens is when we ever do something negative. There's something that psychology we call schadenfreude. Okay, so what's schadenfreude? Schadenfreude is a psychological term when we take pleasure in other people's pain. So whenever somebody famous or relatively famous, and that could be somebody who is a student athlete or a coach or an administrator or a manager or a boss, whoever, whenever even though they do all these things right, if they do one thing wrong, people want to pile on because they want to just show how horrible this person is. Now, it's one mistake, okay? They make one mistake, and the way our society is now designed, that one mistake entitles you to almost a death penalty, right? You you have no value, right? And I believe, by the way, I believe that's completely wrong. I, I believe that we need to be forgiving. I, I believe that we need to be gracious. I believe that we need to be merciful because I just don't believe that they're perfect people. And I think all these people who throw stones at those people who make one mistake, I think if we were able to investigate their private lives, we'd find out that they were not as pure and as holy as they want to believe that they are. And so uh, I, th- I think there's a lesson in that for us here as well, not just that You know, yes, they shouldn't have said what they said on social media, but I think there's a lesson for us also to say, you know, we need to be careful how we throw our stones, right? Because what was the old adage, you know, people throw stones live in glass houses, (laughs) right? And, but I think we need to be careful. But I think also it's incumbent that student athletes and young people understand that when it comes to social media, it's not a separate life from who you are. And so often, even when I taught college and even when I have been on the road teaching social media to businesses and things like that, or I've consulted companies about social media, one of the things that I have commonly said is that everything that you say on social media is you. You you may not see it that way, but that's the point. The point is the way we see it is the way we evaluate you. So when you do, when you're on social media, whatever you say, whatever your political opinion is that you decide to share, whether you, that's really what you believe or not, that's what we believe about you. And so it becomes really, really important that you manage on, especially on social media, that you manage the perceptions of others. And you can say, well, I don't really care. Well, you may not care about what you say on social media. But the person who manages or owns the company does because you represent the company. And so for student athletes, you represent the college or the university. So everything that you, or the high school even, right? Every single thing that you say on social media is, does it come from you once you are a student athlete? Everything you say is a representative of the school. You are no longer your own person. When when you become an athlete, and by the way, this goes for professional athletes as well. When you become an athlete on any level and then you use social media, every single thing you say is a representative of whoever you play for. And so I understand you get upset 
because you want to separate the two lives of social media from your real life. But the truth is, for us who read it, we don't separate it. You are what you post. That's really true. And then I know that so many people get upset and they go, well, I've got freedom of speech, right? I, I, I have freedom of speech on social media. I could say whatever I want to say. You know what? Right. And here's what I say to that. You are absolutely right. You have freedom of speech, but you do not have freedom of consequences. See, people, people don't understand that freedom of speech does not free you from any consequences. Right. And so whenever, you know, this young person starts tweeting or starts, you know, getting on Instagram and starts posting whatever pictures or whatever, they don't understand that. And, and I want them to understand and I want you to understand that you have absolutely every, every right to post whatever you want to post. But you understand that that's going to come with consequences. And by the way, consequences come in two ways. Okay, that there's negative consequences and positive consequences. And we, we very rarely talk about positive consequences when it comes to social media, but there are positive consequences when it comes to social media. Okay, we, we focus so much on the negative consequences. I don't think we really have to talk about that much because we all know you say something stupid, you're going to get hammered by, you know, you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of people, maybe even a million people, right? I mean, Anytime, anytime, you know, our current president says something on Twitter, oh my gosh, it's, you know, million people are responding to it, right? And so, you know, we understand there's consequences for it, but there's positive consequences. Right? I, I, you know, I keep thinking about that there have been so many athletes and there's so many folks who do so many positive things on social media and so many CEOs who do you know, do positive things, philanthropic things, you know, it almost didn't come out, but they do all these things that are good. They don't, may not get the millions of responses, but they get maybe thousands because they're doing the right thing. They're doing, they're helping other people. They're helping other people grow. They're helping other people be better. You know, I, I, I can't, I can't emphasize enough that, consequences come in two types, positive and negative, right? And every time we say the word consequence, we immediately go to the negative. And, and folks, we need positive consequences, which means that to get positive consequences, you got to do positive things on social media. That's how, you, that's how you do that. I mean, there are so many ways to talk positively on social media. And one of the things I talk about in the book you know, the social media playbook for student athletes and the social media playbook for coaches and administrators. One of the things they talk about in those books is, you know, why not play have, and I call them plays, but why not have plays that you can play offense at when it comes to social media, right? Because you could play social media offense, right? And how do you do that? Well, first of all, why don't you post things that would just be fun? Like, for many student athletes in, in this country, they do a lot of traveling. You know, listen, we're in the middle here of, you know, getting ready for the football playoffs and, you know, there's the bowl games and, and everything's going on right now. And we're, we're heading down towards the end of the NFL and, and basketball season starting and we got hockey going on. And, you know, a lot of these young people get to travel to places that many of us don't get to travel to. It would be great if they would take posts of their travels. I mean, that's that's playing offense, right? Because getting people to see, you know, what a great opportunity you have had to not just go someplace and play your sport, which is awesome, but to go and experience a new place, you know, to, to experience a city that you may never have seen as a result of your skill and your ability. That's playing offense. Why, you know, I have been so fortunate that I have traveled with um, NCAA teams, Division One teams, and um, played. I played some college football and as well in smaller college venue. But I've been so fortunate to travel with a Division One school to different places. I've traveled completely across country, 
And, <clears throat> excuse me, and I traveled to places I would have never traveled to had it not been for that opportunity. And we had so much fun uh, being with the, the student athletes on the road and, and I would do study halls and things on the road for them and when I was doing what I was doing at that time. But I also got to learn how other people do what they did, did my job in another place. And it was a very cool experience. And I also got to experience that city for a little bit. And that was a cool experience. And so when I talk about playing social media offense, it's about taking the experience that you are given and then putting it out there. I mean, why not do something fun with your teammates, right? I, I, I talk about this often. You know, what's it like, you know, to on your downtime, right? With, you know, when you're on the road, what's it like? What do you do, right? You know, maybe you have a team meal together. Take a picture of the team meal, right? You know, maybe it's that you actually, you know, like we did study halls. So, you know, get a picture of all you, all you, you know, you're studying, right? Because you still have exams and things that these young people still have exams and things that they have to do. So why not um, take pictures of those things, right? That's playing offense in social media. Because the last thing we want to do is we want to play defense in social media. And what do I mean by playing defense? you know, defensive social media. Well, from time to time, people will do stupid. <laughs> I have no other way of saying that. But sometimes people will do stupid when it comes to social media. And so, so often when people do stupid on social media, they will say something and put something out that they should have never done. And they let it linger out there. And instead of deleting it right away, it stays out there until all of a sudden this barrage of negativity comes on them for what they posted on social media. And so then what happens, what happens is now you have to play defense. So how do you play defense on social media? Well, the first thing I always tell people is that when you do something stupid on social media and you're being tagged for it, first thing, rule one, Never say your account got hacked, ever, ever, ever say that. Even if it's true, don't say it because, first of all, it's never true. It's very, it's it's hardly, I, the, the percentages are so low. We don't believe you anyway, okay? We, we never believe somebody who says, oh, my Twitter account got hacked and that wasn't me. Liar. That's what, we, that's what we say. Liar. You're lying to us. That's the first statement whenever we hear a student athlete ever say to us that you or whenever I get a, a CEO or a salesperson who's posted something they should have never posted on social media say, well, my account was hacked and that wasn't me. Our first statement is you are the biggest liar in the world. And you go, but but it's true, but it's true. No, no, come on, it's not. So never, that's number one. First of all, never do that. Number two, never, never blame an emotional state for your social media. Well, you know, I was, I was, you know, this, this really bothered me and I was angry and I, I, I posted this out in anger and no. No. So what you just told the rest of the world is that you have no emotional control. You can't control yourself. You're completely out of control and that your thumbs on your phone that posted on social media, uh, have you had no control over that because your emotions were too high. Do you know how ridiculous that looks to people? It's incredibly ridiculous. So never, never blame your emotions for your thumbs. Ever, ever, especially when you're posting to social media because folks are not buying it or not. So to play defense on social media, the, the, the easiest thing to do, first easiest thing to do is when you screw up and you've deleted your post, hopefully, right? And even though you delete it, you know it's going to be lingering out there, right? It's not, it's not going to go away and you're having to deal with it because you're having to deal with the media. The first thing that you do is take responsibility for it. I I know that sounds crazy, 
But the truth of the matter is we respect someone who says, you know what? I posted this. I should not have. I have no idea why I even, even thought this was a good idea. And I clearly made a mistake and I apologize to anyone that I've hurt as a result of this post because I was completely wrong. How does that make you feel? I mean, how would that make you feel, listeners, if an athlete who posted something stupid on social media just came out and said, I was really wrong. I should have never posted that. I can't explain why I did it. I just know it was the wrong thing. It, I recognized that it was hurting people and it was wrong. Man, we'd all go, whoa, I can respect that, right? You can respect somebody who takes responsibility for what they do or what they say. But whenever we shift blame on my account was hacked or my emotions were out of control or, you know, um, you know, you know, I'm just protecting my family or some other ridiculous statement that demonstrates that you have no control whatsoever to just take, just, just admit that you're wrong. It's, it's such a simple thing to do. By the way, it's a great relational tool for you. For those of you who are in relationships, I just want to tell you, in general, stop making excuses for yourself. Stop making excuses that, well, this circumstance happened or that circumstance happened. And so, therefore, you know, I did this because of that. That's so, no, no. You screwed up. You messed it up, right? You, you, to, 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 to say that you're powerless is so wrong. It's an excuse. None of us are powerless. There's always something that we could have done. There's always something that we can be doing, whether this is in social media or something in life. Stop excusing your behavior or rationalizing your behavior because of someone else. You had a choice. You could have chose a different path. You could have chose to not say that. You didn't. You said it. You posted it. Take the responsibility for it. It's plain and simple. That's what you need to do. Today's uh, show, thanks for letting me have a drink of water, by the way. I hear my voice was starting to crack there. Uh, today's show is brought to us by Inline Business Brokers and Advisors. Inline Business Brokers and Advisors have literally helped thousands of clients in the sale and purchase of businesses. When it's time to sell your business, contact the professionals at Inline Business Brokers and Advisors. You can learn so much more online by going to inline.com. That's www. E-N-L-I-G-N dot com. And they are bringing you today's new direction. And they are actually sponsoring my books today too. Um, the Social Media Playbook for Student Athletes and the Social Media Playbook for Coaches and Administrators. That is available currently on uh, Amazon. You can get them both in Kindle and uh, paperback. The, uh, the books are, by the way, the, I love the covers. The covers are beautiful. And I need to thank uh, Jake Key at, G K S um, uh, for doing the covers of the books. The books are beautiful. And so if, um, if you have somebody who, you know, that is a student athlete or somebody who's a coach and administrator, and they all have to deal in with social media, I, I hate blowing my own horn, but would you just, you know, recommend the book, you know, social media playbook for student athletes. And, and, you know, it would be, if you're thinking about what do I get a gift of a coach? Well, why don't you, Give them a gift of these two books. They're $9.99 each. And uh, I think the Kindle versions are like $5.99 or something like that. They're terribly inexpensive. I literally um, did them this way. I kept the prices under $10 for a reason. And that was because I really wanted to help as many people as I could. And they're not terribly long reads. Uh, they're very easy and they're fun. And uh, so... Look for the social media playbook for coaches and administrators and the social media playbook for student athletes on Amazon. And you can also get it at your bookstore. You just need to ask for it. Just tell them you'd like to 
I'd like to order a copy of the social media playbook for student athletes and the social media playbook for coaches and administrators. And um, they'll, they will certainly order that for you as well. Uh, we're, we're talking about um, social media and student athletes and coaches. And even if, for those of you who are in business, we're talking about, um, you know, how, how do we protect ourselves from doing stupid on social media? And by the way, I, and I know I've got a lot of business people. I know Michelle, Tom, uh, Dwayne, Trey, uh, Muriel's all out there. And, and, uh, uh, also Nato Ruiz is out there as well. You know, one of the things I want to tell you folks is that, you know, regardless of what your position is in life, social media, first of all, it's not a good thing or a bad thing, but what you post determines that. And so, you know, if you think that you're not famous now, just post something really stupid on social media and you can become immediately famous. And, and it's sad that that's really the truth because you could be posting so many great things for good causes. I, I know so many people are so involved with so many charities and they're posting all that stuff about charities and good things and, and even things that are neat and cool. Like we just recently had a, you know, one of the earliest snowstorms I remember uh, here and it dropped, I think about nine inches in our backyard and, and it's quickly melting away. But, you know, people taking pictures of it because it's beautiful and it's rare and we, you know, we don't get a lot of snow here in North Carolina. All those good things. Maybe they get just a few likes and, and maybe they get a few comments, but you post something negative and I mean, people pile on. It's just incredible how our society has gravitated towards all this negativity. And sometimes people I feel like are so desperate for attention that they will utilize social media to try to get attention in their lives. Some of us do it, you know, I do it because it's, it's part of my natural routine and I do enjoy the attention. I'm, I'm going to not lie. I'm going to tell you, I do enjoy the attention. I'd love it when people like my stuff. I love it when people share my stuff. I love it when people comment on anything that I post. I, I'm be the first one to admit that I do like it. It's not the reason I do it. I, I do it for a variety of other reasons because first of all, I study it and I enjoy it and I enjoy connecting with people and I enjoy being part of the conversation and and I, I love the interaction. I really do, which is why I don't like Twitter as much. The reason I don't like Twitter is because there's just not as much interaction. Um, so, you know, I, I prefer Facebook and Instagram because, and even LinkedIn. I, LinkedIn has more interaction for me than Twitter. So I prefer those three platforms. Um, over any of the others, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And so, you know, being cautious of what you're putting out there is important. And I always tell people too, you know, be very careful. You know, if you're a student athlete, you're a coach, be very careful of your political views, okay? Remember, folks, I'm going to say this again because I said it earlier. Remember, everything you post represents who you work for. You cannot be a separate entity from where you work. I don't care how hard you try. The, the fact of the matter is, if you post something out there, everything you post represents who pays your check. If you're a student athlete, you have a scholarship or you have you know the ability to put on the suit and uniform, everything that you say on social media represents the school that you play for people in business in the business world everything you say represents the business you work for everything you say it's not fair it may not be fair it, it may not be fair but it's a fact which is why you got to be so careful about even posting things about politics and the reason why is you may have your own political opinion, but that may not be the representative of the political opinion of the people who write your check. And, and, and not only that, if you're in business for yourself and you espouse political opinions, you've already eliminated 50% of the people who prospectively want to do business with you because of your political opinion. Why would you do that? 
Why would you eliminate prospective customers and clients to your business by espousing a political opinion that only 50% of the people agree with? It makes no sense to me. It's one thing to privately have them among your friends, but to put them out in public like that, and, and I don't care. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. It doesn't matter to me. Right? I I literally have set up in my Facebook page, there is this third-party program that you can get for free. By the way, you can look it up. That literally I could put in keywords into my Facebook feed, right? That I never see the post. If you have Republican, Democrat, if you have uh, Trump, Obama, Hillary, Clinton, what any political word in your post, any of it, I will never see the post. Because that's not why I go to social media for. So if you want to complain, if, if I, I have president, vice president, and anything, every word that I could think of. And if new, another one comes up, I put it in there so I eliminate the post. So I never see it. Because I, that's not what I'm there for. I am there to keep up with my family and friends and enjoy their company and have a good experience, right? The political discourse does nothing but create arguments and tension, which I am not on social media for. I am not on social media to hear everybody espouse their, their, their opinion on the political climate. I don't care. What I want to know is, what are you doing for Christmas? <laughs> you know, what are you enjoying? What are your trips? What are your travels? What's new going on in your life? Right? That, that's what I'm there for, to interact with. Right? That, that's, that's what I'm there for, to be encouraged, not to be discouraged. And so when you're, uh, when you're in business or you're a student athlete or you're a coach, you have to be so careful of your politics because it, it really it really can become a problem because we all know how we feel about political discourse in this country right now. It is, it is incredibly tension driven. And, and by the way, if you're an older person who takes a political opinion on social media and you decide to be very, very staunch about whatever political side you're on, you do realize if you have children that you're really putting your children in a bad position, right? Right, you do, right? You understand that. That you, you've, you've, put your, you've put your children in a position where they got to go to school and whether you want to buy into this or not, chances are some teacher who disagrees with you, um, while they will never outwardly say it, they may be giving your child a harder time in school and you can't do anything about it. They're, they may be grading them harder than they grade the other students. Just just because of psychological reactance to your post. You say, oh, that would never happen. Trust me, it happens. I've, I've, I've seen it happen in sports, by the way, where uh, people hate a coach and want the coach to be gone in college so bad that literally the coach had to pull his kids out of school because the other kids were saying so many horrible things about their father at school. It's, it's true. So if, if you think that you say whatever you want to say on social media because you feel like you have free speech, you do not have freedom of consequences. Maybe the consequences won't happen to you, but you may be putting your family in consequences that you never even thought about. And I say this to, I say this to anybody who's in business. I say this to anybody who, if you're in, I don't care what you do, sales, I, I don't care what you do, right? Somebody that you don't know is reading something that you posted and it's affecting them in one way or another. Every time. You cannot walk away from a post and think that you're unaffected. You can't. You, you cannot just uh, put something out there and expect that people are not, not going to be affected by it. They are. You know, I, this is the reason why I tell people, you know what, play offense 
write good things, write things to encourage people, write things to uplift people. Use your status in life to make the lives better of other people. I, I think that's why we're on this planet. The last time I checked is that it really wasn't all about us, that the fact of the matter is that it was about us helping other people. Right? That's what makes lives more fulfilled. And, and now that social media is such a part of our everyday lives, well, then let's use the tool for good and enhance the lives of other people. Let's, let's give them some good. Let's give them some encouragement. Let's show them that there is a life that, you know, that they can attain to. You know, we don't think about the word encourage meaning this, but it literally means to give courage to someone else to do something better than what they're at right now. That's what encouragement is, to give a person enough courage to do something great. And we can do that. And some of us are in positions that we could do this so much better from where we're at now. And, and you know, student athlete, coach, you're in a position to encourage people because people look at you. Business person, you know, business person you, or CEO, if you're the CEO of a company, people are looking to you. They are looking to you because everything that you say, they're, they're, they're thinking about, they're listening to. And, and you person who thinks that, oh, you know, all I do is sell stuff. Folks, I don't care if you're pushing a mop and cleaning a toilet. Somebody is paying attention. I read recently that there was a lady who worked, uh, this, is, this, this hasn't happened all that recently ago, but there was a lady who worked as one of the workers who were giving kids school lunches, right? Nameless person just would give kids school lunches, right? I mean, she would, she was the person who would set up the tray, you know, then she would just put food on the tray and the plates for the kids at school. And evidently she gave a free lunch to a person who didn't have any money. And there was some issue with that, I guess, on some level. But I thought that she, you know, she posted that evidently, and there were some other issues going on. And you think, well, who pays attention to the lady who puts lunches together for students at school? Well, people did. She made the newspaper. So don't think that your position is too low, that nobody's paying attention to what you're posting and what you're doing. Because it's, that's just, that's not true. We, we all are paying attention, right? You, you pay attention. You think about, think about the social media usage. You are paying attention to things that you would normally not pay attention to because of social media. Matter of fact, I know you do because as I had this conversation with a lady and she said, why do people post, post things about their ham sandwich or take pictures of their food? And I said, it's because you're paying attention to complain about it. <laughs> and you, because I've said, listen, if it really, if it really didn't matter, you wouldn't have paid attention and brought it up. But there were probably thousands of posts that you don't remember, but you remember the food posts that you didn't like. Why? Because it moved you emotionally. And so you're paying attention to the things that you don't like, which means that you're paying attention even if it's to irritate you, right? But it's a sandwich or, you know, or, or it's a plate of salmon or whatever it is, right? You know, it's, it's, it's broccoli spears. I don't know what it is, but the fact is you're paying attention because you're complaining about it. So you are paying attention to it, which, which just makes it all the more funny, which is why everything that we post out there does have some sort of an impact. You're not thinking about it that way. You're not even considering that that can happen, but it really is true that we do that because it's impactful. So why not, why not do things to impact people in a positive way on social media? 
It's not that hard. But it is intentional, right? I mean, you have to be very intentional about everything that you post. This is why I tell coaches and athletes when it comes to, and in, in business people, before you post, I have a really simple acronym. Take 30 seconds for the win, W-I-N. And what do I mean by taking 30 seconds for the win before you post? Let's say you're on your favorite social media platform and you start typing in on your phone, right? You type in your phone and you're doing your thing and you're about ready to hit post or you're about ready to hit post or the arrow to hit send or whatever. Before you do that, take 30 seconds. What we find is that people will wait 30 seconds before they post anything right away. First of all, they have a likelihood of editing the post or not posting it. There's a higher likelihood. So it's just 30 seconds. Just 30 seconds of holding that thumb from posting. Okay, 30 seconds. And what I want you to do in that 30 seconds is, and it's win, W-I-N. All right, the W stands for, what would your grandmother think of your post? Right? What would your grandmother think of your post? Yeah, I mean, before you hit send, what would she, what would she think? Would she think this is okay, post? Would she be proud of you for doing it? Would she, would she say that respects the family? Would she say that, yep, that's my, that's my little girl or that's my little boy? That's my grandson. That's my granddaughter. Oh, isn't that nice? Right? I know it sounds silly, but you know what, folks? I'm being really honest when I say to you that something as simple as thinking about anything that you post before you, what would my grandmother think? <laughs> Might keep you from posting it. All right, number two, the I. So you got W, what would my grandmother, I. And that's intentionality. Being intentional. Do I really intend to say what I'm saying here? Have I been intentional that I am absolutely fully aware of every word that I have put down here? Have I intentionally said everything I need to say? That's the I. Right? No excuses. No, I wasn't thinking before I was thumbing. <laughs> thumbing on the phone. I wasn't thinking before I was thumbing. No, I was intentional. Okay. And then the end, the N in the end, W, so we had w what, what would your grandmother think? I, uh, you know, intentionality being intentional about which, right. And then the N, does this need to be posted now? Need. So is, is it need, is this needed? Do I need to post this now? Do I need to post it at all? Do I even need to do this? If you take that 30 seconds and you go through W-I-N, what, my, what would my grandmother think? Intentionality and need, does this need to be posted now? If you went through all those things, I promise you that you would not post anything stupid. If you do, if you do then you're being intentional about doing it, which means that you deserve everything that you got if it's negative right? Because then there is no one else to blame but yourself for doing that. So 30 seconds for the win. And that's my, that's my little acronym for helping people to get through it because it, it really makes things, uh, it will make, it will keep you from doing stupid out there. It really will. And it will help you. And so I want you, I want us all to think about that. And, and because you, you have to understand that folks, it's, it gets to be, we just don't think, because we're behind a, a, a phone or a laptop or a tablet or whatever we're using, you know, we can be very, very um, uninhibited. And so uh, we will, the, what happens is our inhibitions are lessened. And so we have to be, we have to be very careful about, you know, our inhibition effect, you know, where our inhibitions get dropped because we're behind a phone or a screen or something like that, because it's very real. It's a, it's a very real psychological phenomena um, that I talk about in the book, by the way. 
about how being behind a phone or a tablet or a screen can lower our inhibitions. And then the next thing you know, you're saying things that you shouldn't have said to do that. Um, I need to, I got to do this though before we can go any further. Hey, listen, I want to tell you that today's sponsor is Enline um, Business Advisors and Brokers. Enline represents profitable privately held companies with gross annual revenues in excess of a million dollars. Enline delivers the highest market value in the shortest amount of time with complete confidentiality. So one of the things I'm, I was always, I've been told by Jeff Snell, who owns Enline Business Brokers, is that one of the biggest issues that business people have is they want to keep things confidential. I am telling you that that is a big deal to him as well. He keeps everything extraordinarily confidential. And it's his top priority is your confidentiality. And because a lot of people don't want people to know that the business is for sale. And he is extraordinarily, he's amazing. Check out the folks at nline.com. That's www.nline, that's E-N-L-I-G-N.com. And uh, Jeff and his brokers and advisors will help you for sure. And we're talking, uh, we're talking around my book, uh, the two books that I have out. And uh, we're going to finish it, wrap it up here. A little bit, but we're talking about the two books that I have out, the social media playbook for student athletes and the social media playbook for coaches and administrators. And uh, I, the reason why we're doing this today is because uh, we, there was a scheduling conflict with the guest that I was supposed to have today. They couldn't make it. So I am um, talking about the two books that are on Amazon. Again, it is the social media playbook for student athletes and the social media playbook for coaches and administrators. They're in paperback. Both of them are $9.99 each. Uh, and uh, you can get a Kindle version for $5.99. They're quick reads. They are meant and in to meant to help these young people and also help coaches and administrators understand how to deal with social media. And we've been talking about both that and actually people in business and dealing with social media. And I haven't talked much about the coaches end of this in the book, but Here's the thing that I want to say to coaches, if I have anybody who's a coach and listening and is trying to deal with this issue of social media at some level, let, let me say this to you, coaches. So hear me, hear me, coaches and administrators, and especially administrators, because you people, I don't want to be mean, but sometimes you people just won't listen because your mind is already made up. Okay. You, I have been around enough college administrators to know when their mind's made up and they have an argument for everything and their, their way is the only way and the right way. And so many of them are trying to uh, protect their jobs and, you know, because they don't want things to get control. So um, what I find is coaches and administrators operate from a don't model, meaning that they, their, their answer to everything is don't do this. Right, so a lot of, a lot of coaches and administrators will tell their student athletes, "Don't." It is a very, I want you to listen to me really, very carefully, coaches and administrators. That is a very bad way to coach students. Social media. It's a horrible way. It is like a parent saying to a young woman or young man, "I do not want you dating him or her." Don't date him or her. What you do is you get, when you do that, the psychological reactants means that, and psychological reactants works this way. Whenever we feel our freedom threatened, we will do the very thing that you don't want us to do. So whenever you say, don't do this, right? Don't post on social media. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make up a fake account and I'm going to post and see if you can catch me because they do that. You, 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 know, you have no idea how many student athletes right now, coach and administrator, have a set up a Gmail account that is not attached to their name because they made up a fake name or some other email account and they've created a profile that you have no idea exists and are posting all sorts of things from it until it gets picked up by uh, some news media outlet. And then they ask you, how come you didn't know? Right? What you should have known. 
Well, part of the reason why this happens from time to time is because we we're not coaching social media like you coach your sport. You would never tell an athlete who is in the middle of an athletic performance, you would never coach them by just saying, don't do that. Don't run like that. Don't block like that. Don't swing like that. You, you would never coach, and that's it. Just leave it there. Don't swing like that and then walk away. No, what you would do is you would say, don't do this, you know, but do this instead. We never, there is no such thing as effective coaching by just saying don't. No one coaches by simply saying do not do. No, we coach, we go, do not do, but instead do this. And, and I'm not blaming you administrators and coaches for this. It's because you don't understand social media and how to get the best out of it. See what you see what happens is when you when you start shutting off all the social media pieces as a coach or an administrator, when you start doing that, you're actually hurting your student athlete's future. Do you realize that? Do you realize that there are some reports that say that somewhere between 68 and 72% of companies are hiring directly through social media? Jobvite, I think, has a report that I think a lot, their last report was like 68% of companies hired directly through social media. The resume is dead, folks. The people who are out there promoting that somehow that a resume is going to get you a career is wrong. You, you, you fill out your LinkedIn profile. You, you will get, you will have more opportunities by having a complete LinkedIn profile than you ever get submitting thousands of resumes. I'm just, I'm just telling you that. Did you, did you know that there is a student portal specifically designed for students on LinkedIn to, to get paid internships and their first paid career job? That's devoted specifically for students. Nobody knows about it. Yeah, it's it's it, it's called students.linkedin.com. You didn't know, did you? Your young person can get can find their first job and not have to compete with the whole rest of the world. And and except the people in their own age group, their first job, they can get paid internships through the student portal at LinkedIn. Yeah. Nobody's teaching that. Why aren't you teaching that, coaches and administrators? I mean, because let's be honest. 99% of your student-athletes are not going to be playing a professional sport. They're going to need a career after college. Why not, why not help them get a career that they're actually going to have to be in? Right. And, and I get, I get, I get it. You know, you're trying to simplify it down, but you're actually, you actually could be helping more young people by helping them understand how to build a career after college, a, a professional career after college by utilizing social media in the right way. Parents, parents, this is, the, I'm saying the same thing to you too. Grandparents, help your grandchildren, help your kids help their grandchildren, your grandchildren. Right, if they're doing social media in the right way, they can be setting themselves up in such a good way to get their next career job, folks. And and for those of you who are in career transition right now, who are l watching, listening to the show, whatever, folks, I hope that you have got a complete LinkedIn profile that is full and looks good and represents you well, and that some because I'm telling you. People are scanning, they're using these scanners to find keywords for jobs and things, and they're pulling them, pulling candidates right off of LinkedIn, some off of Facebook directly, right? All because of what you do in social media. Folks, we, we've hired, we, my, my wife owns a real estate company, 
the lovely and talented Linda Craft, you could go to www.lindacraft.com. That's L-A-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T.com. Cheap plug. We literally have, I don't remember how many people we hired directly from LinkedIn. Put an ad on LinkedIn. That was the only thing we did. People came, we hired from LinkedIn. Bingo. Yeah, proof in the pudding. Hired from LinkedIn. Yep. Yep, next time we're going to hire from Facebook because there's a bigger there's a bigger candidate pool. It's the next step. Yeah. Right? It's And it's really easy because, you know, if I hire from a social media platform, I get to see more about you. Right? Which is why if you're a coach or administrator, you know, or a parent, you should be teaching your kids the right things to do on these social media platforms and so that they can prepare themselves for their career. So that if you're ready to do a career jump or a career change or whatever you're doing, that you're able to do that. And, and we're not, we're not doing that, you know, and, and I, you know, maybe this is the reason I'm here is to encourage people to understand how to use this platform in such a way to, to help, other people and help them grow. Maybe that's, maybe that's part of my calling. I don't know. Um, but I do know that it's a big deal to me because I know that we could use these social media platforms in such a better way than we're currently using them. And, and people are gathering so much information from them that if you set up your profiles in the right way and you're doing the right thing and you're encouraging the right people and you're setting yourself up, people are going to hire you because of what you do on social media. So I think if I were to give you a new direction when it comes to social media and everything, first of all, I want to thank you for indulging me today. Uh, we didn't have our scheduled guests. We had a scheduling conflict. So we're talking about my two new books, the social media playbook for student athletes and the social media playbook for coaches and administrators currently available on Amazon. And uh, I'll, I'll post a link in the show as well. And, um, but uh, you can buy those books. Uh, and by the way, you can, if you want to, you can even order them through your local bookstore if you want to order them that way and, and do that as well. But if I'm to give you a new direction in social media, it is this. First of all, social media is neither good nor bad. It is a tool that we have the power to guide any way we want to. And everything you post is powerful. Everything is powerful. Even though you think that nobody's paying attention, I promise you people are paying attention to everything you write. And yes, you have freedom of speech, but you need to fully understand that you do not have freedom of consequences. And consequences come in two types, positive and negative. And we are always more drawn to the negative side. So it's incumbent on us to be intentional and to be as positive as we can, to encourage as many people as we can, to give them the courage to do something they thought they would never do. And that's the show. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for staying with me and hanging out. I want to thank again Inline Business Brokers and Advisors for being a sponsor of the show. They are such awesome people. Do me a favor, would you please? Would you please go to www.enlign.com? That's nline.com. And would you just let them know that you heard the show on A New Direction with Jay Izzo and that you appreciate them sponsoring the show? And uh, we'd be really, really grateful to do that. Check out the books on Amazon. And ladies and gentlemen, as I always say, we will see you next week. We have another, we, have, I, we will have another guest next week, I promise. I think we're going to be doing something in a top 10 list uh, fashion next week somewhere. And I think that'll be a lot of fun. So it's going to be our pre-Christmas show. And so we're looking forward to it. I look forward to seeing you. Listen, everybody, be inspired because when you inspire, when you're inspired, you can inspire someone else. And when you're inspiring someone else, they can do amazing things and that can make this world just such a greater place. I will talk to you soon. Ciao, everybody.
got to know you can survive This is your time to find A new direction, a brand new day A new direction, things are gonna change You can find the strength to go a different way Your dreams will take you places you have never been before. Find your passion, find your strength.